Welcome back guys to another episode in the DIY turbo build video series. Uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, some bits and parts. There's, there's, there's always little tasks that you need to do when you're doing a completely DIY route. So we're going to look at putting the turbo together, uh, finishing the clocking process, and then we're also going to finish our lines and drill the oil pan. So stay tuned. So as I mentioned, we have our flange. We also have this little intake piece, which I'm um, piping that goes into this, uh, which is going to route to our wastegate. Uh, and we'll get into some of the details of that a little bit later. Um, we also have our assorted hardware. We've got replacement hardware for these metal pieces that go onto the turbo like this. But these are just pieces of metal. They don't really wear out. I may just reuse the originals because they're just a tad thicker than the new hardware that's here. We have our oil fitting. We have a gasket that goes with it. Um, we have our other fittings for uh, the block. So this is what's gonna go into the block for our oil feed. We have this fitting, which is gonna go into the top of the turbo. Uh, and we have these two water fittings. This one's a straight one uh, that goes to directly to a 6AN line. And this one's a banjo fitting, which goes also to a 6AN line. And this one's going to be on the exhaust manifold side, and we'll see how that works due to the, to the routing. Um, so this is going to come straight up from the feed line, and this is going to go straight out. So that's how we're going to set that up. And I'll show you this. We're not going to use these right now, but on final assembly, we're going to use these copper-plated nuts, which prevents corrosion and um, basically seizing uh, their anti-seize naturally on the studs and they also lock so what that does is it prevents the nuts and everything from backing out as you drive this is a common pro uh, problem with you know heat cycling pieces of equipment like a turbo where it gets really hot and then cools down really hot cools down over time your stuff will loosen up so now the other thing we're going to look at maybe wondering what the heck is this piece of glass doing here well one thing that you may have with your turbo or with some kit that you may have ordered is some gaskets. Now, it's generally, on the Miata, it's generally recommended to go ahead and run an OEM gasket. This is the old one I pulled off. It's not in great shape, but it, it, did, it does have the three layers, metal uh, layers. And so turbo manifold to block, you run a gasket. However, manifold to turbo, and also turbo to, to downpipe, sometimes it doesn't make sense to run a gasket that they just blow out, they just don't work. And the way that you can get away with that is if all of your stuff is flat. If it's flat, there's no gasket required. The gasket takes care of little imperfections and makes it so it doesn't have to be flat. However, in our case, because of the heat cycles that I mentioned and just the, how, you know, uh, much of a strain the environment is of a turbo in general, these things tend to not work for very long. So we want to test if this is flat or not. And there are simple ways of making them, machining them to become flat that you can do yourself with a belt sander actually. These are small pieces and so a belt sander can work really well in getting these to be flat. And the way we do that is we can come over here to a nice flat surface like this plate of glass. So this is some plate glass. And what I can do is I can put this turbo on here carefully so it's not to correct the glass. And I get my feeler gauge. And I find one that's uh, fairly thin. And uh, let's pull one out. So we've got this one, which is two one thousandths of an inch so very very thin and what we do is with it the manifold on a flat surface we simply try to insert the feeler gauge and as you go around you will see that it's basically doing pretty well now right here is a little bit of space but that's really not a too much of a problem because it's right where the stud is and that's going to clamp down anyway as we can see, this eBay 
manifold is machined fairly well. Not bad, right? Now, when we take a look in the same position of the manifold to the turbo, oops, we do the same little test and whoops, immediately it inserts very easily between each one of these studs. So, I mean, we could press down a little bit here and see if that helps and not really. So as you can see, either the turbo or the manifold right here is not flat. My guess is actually the turbo. So what we can do to test that is to take the turbo off and test it again against the piece of glass. And so one thing that we can do is the size of this is really pretty small. So we can put this on a belt sander. You can clamp the belt sander down and just use the weight of this to take off a couple thousandths um, where it needs to. And the gravity will provide the flattening uh, capability. So you'll see that parts of it aren't touched and parts of it are sanded a little bit. And that's exactly what you want at the end. At that point, you can repeat your test and you've got a nice flat surface so that when you crank this down, it will seal. Okay, so with our turbo flat, it's on its studs, but flat on the table, then we can take this and we can rotate it down. And what you wanna do is look at where your oil input line is. The drain line is the flat one on this particular style of turbo. And these are your water lines. That needs to be straight up and down when it's clocked. So it's gonna be exactly parallel to this flange because on the Miata, this is straight up and down, this surface. So we're gonna line this up. And what you can do when you insert it, actually before you insert it, we can smear like a little bit of some general purpose grease on here just to make it so that we can twist it while it's in and just get it lined up that last little perfect couple millimeters. So dab this just right around here. will help us get this inserted. So this is facing down. And you wanna be careful when doing the insertion to not tweak the blades. Okay. Just verify that we are straight up and down. Looks good. And then we can place our bolts on and use this to clamp it down. So once you've got this set in there where it needs to go and you've verified that it spins, then we're gonna scribe a little mark here so that we know exactly where it can go. And the reason for that is we have to take it apart again. This thing um, needs to go on there and the bolts need to go on there. However, you can see one of the bolts is right here underneath this fitting and also, especially, this is the worst one, underneath the oil drain plug. And as you can see, as it is right now, this bolt does not fit in here. So we have to remove it a little bit so that it's loose, tighten it down a few threads, and then we can set it down uh, the rest of the way in. So to make that a little bit easier, it's still a huge pain, um, we're just gonna scribe a little mark across here um, so that we know where this goes. Okay, nice and torqued down. Now we can get some of these fittings on. So this is the 10 AN drain fitting that we have and it comes with a gasket. That's how it came originally on the car. And we will get that in there. It comes with these uh, Allen key uh, bolts or also called internal hex. And it's a six millimeter. So we're gonna get to put that on there. All right, so for the feed fitting, we're gonna put a little thread sealer on here. Now, this is mostly, I don't know if you can see in there, um, uh, sealed by the fact that it's an inverted flare fitting. So there's a little rubber gasket in there that goes into this, the bottom of this um, flare right here. And get the same for the uh, 
banjo fitting. I'm going to put the banjo fitting on the manifold side. And so it comes with these copper washers. It goes One goes on either side. One goes facing the thing and uh, the turbo housing. And then the other one goes uh, on the outside of this. So on both sides of this. And so since the shelf is right here on the car, um, and also because I'm going to be doing something special with where this water goes, it's actually going to go that way, back. Um, I'm just going to have one that uh, fitting that goes straight out, and then the oil feed line is going to go to the side of it and come back and come back down. So if you re recall, the oil feed is going to come up and around, connect on top, and then we're going to have the um, water fitting come out. So we've got the same deal here. We'll put a little thread sealant on there and get that threaded in. So these guys came with uh, a couple of uh, bolts, but these are regular M8 by 1.25 1, 1 uh, thread count or pitch, thread pitch. And so I'm using some nuts instead that I got from the hardware store. We're going to be reusing, these studs are actually kind of useful, the fact that they're so large. Um, because we're going to bolt on a little bracket that's going to be used to remount the wastegate. Because the wastegate, you can see where the holes are on the original thing, was down here. So that's no good. We need it to be straight in line with the way the original wastegate was. So that rod needs to be right here. And as you can see, these studs kind of line up. What we're going to do is just create a little bracket that can be mounted on here. There's a good amount of space here for that. We'll just take some an angle bracket. We're going to mount this on here. And then we're going to clamp our wastegate controller to this. And I believe we won't even have to cut the rod. I think it'll actually work. So if not, we can use some washers maybe to move it back and forth a little bit so we don't have to cut and re-weld that. That's always nice um, to be able to keep it as original as possible. All right, so finally we've got our little compressor uh, outlet pipe, and this is going to go onto here like this. And you'll notice that it has it came with an O-ring, and so the original came with an O-ring too. You can still kind of see it. So we're going to clean this up just a little bit so it seals nicely. But we just screw this on. Comes with these again Allen head bolts. So now we can put this little nozzle into here otherwise we'll have a giant boost leak and we'll put a little thread sealant on here this is one place that you can connect the wastegate it's a standard place it's just right here to the output um, now the problem with that can be that this is going to be the highest boost possible it's before any of your intercooler piping and so on and so there's usually a bit of a drop off as in terms of pressure as it goes through all the pipes and fills that volume of air and gets all the way to the other side. So a lot of times people will tap another place on the throttle body side and take their wastegate source signal from there instead. And what that does is it avoids boost sag. Now, the downside of that is that you can actually have a, be a little bit higher on the higher end um, in terms of the pressure that's coming out on this side. So the safe side is to put it here but the more accurate side is to put it on pre-throttle body over on this side. So it depends on kind of what you're looking for. So for now, I'm just going to play it safe, put it over here. I want to know what the boost pressure is and to have the wastegate activate as early as possible because at the beginning, I'm not going to be wanting to do a whole lot of boost and I don't really care about a little bit of boost sag. That's not going to be a problem. So for now, we're just going to thread it in here. Later, we can cap this. All right, so I'm test fitting this, and as you can see, this T-bolt clamp is pretty wide, and I've got the intercooler piping on, so I just wanted to see, because I thought this might be a problem. As you can see, these little um, Allen bolts, uh, they stick out a bit, and um, 
the intercooling piping does not go behind them. There's very little space behind them. And so what I'm gonna do, I think, is these, this is pretty thick. I'm gonna actually countersink these suckers, at least a little bit, maybe not all the way in, but I'm gonna countersink them so that they can uh, be a little bit more flush mount. So we're gonna try that. All right, I like that. So just a little, these are 2564th in size exactly, the heads. So if you get a, the drill bit one size larger than that, it works fine, or a 2564th uh, and just kind of wiggle it, um, it'll work fine. And then you can flush mount these guys. Boom, it makes it a lot better. So now this guy will fit on here just fine flush and it will clamp down behind the little lip all right so we got all this set up I bolted this down uh, to the manifold and as you can see there's not a lot of clearance here for these AN fittings but there is just enough so we're all set there um, this is going to be the straight uh, fitting which is going to be similar to this 6 AN fitting which I've got down here on the banjo bolt and so you can see you've got enough room to get a wrench barely on everything. And then I still need to make a block off plate because um, this manifold comes with a port for a external wastegate. So we're just gonna make a plate, machine it down so it's flat and put it on here uh, with these bolts. And definitely this is a lot easier to do outside of the car. Uh, one of the benefits of the small turbo is that you should be able to actually put this on the block and the studs, slide it over the studs just like this, and uh, it makes assembly of everything so much more easy. So getting the oil port fitting for the feed line, um, this that I could find is a, uh, a 10 millimeter by 1.5 uh, pitch thread to 3 a.n. and the inside is an inverted flare and that's a little bit longer than the original plug that was in there so since I don't want that going deeper really than the original plug um, I, if it sticks out it may impede flow what I did was I cut it off and an easy way to do this is a quick tip thread a similar size uh, nut down on the thing and then you can cut this off with whatever a grinder or a dremel or bandsaw or whatever and then you can unthread the thread and you make sure that you're not damaging any of the threads so the nut acts as a as as like a chaser so it's gonna chase the threads back so that you'll be able to uh, thread it back into the block with no problems got that oil feed port uh, inserted and uh, for some reason the outer nut there was a 9 16 I don't know why it's like a, a dash a in fitting to a metric um, thread and size and everything but the outer thing was 9 16 anyway that was just enough uh, clearance between that and the side there of the bell house housing um, to get a, a 916 socket on there, uh, the chrome kind that's thin walled. Um, so that went on relatively easily. And then the other thing though, that you may need to do, if you notice, uh, I don't have the, here's the, uh, the 90 for the uh, uh, water feed. And what I did was to give myself a little clearance just to be able to screw this in. This will have clearance um, once it's all screwed down and stuff, it should be fine, but You'll notice that the dipstick is kind of in the way. There's a nut, 10 millimeter nut, on the other side of this little stud. It goes in like that. And if you just remove that, you can wiggle this around. This is held in place at the bottom only by the O-ring, which this is a good time to inspect that. And um, this is all wet because I tried to spray it down with some brake clean and some degreaser and stuff because we've had multiple leaks in the past. Um, so anyway... Uh, I wanted to clean that off but uh, this is a good time to check that o-ring you basically just pull firmly upwards and you can get the o-ring and replace it and reinsert it and then screw down that nut up at the top 
Anyway, by pulling this out, you can just wiggle this, give yourself extra few millimeters of clearance to get that right angle fitting in there. So finalizing the fitting for the various lines and stuff, uh, the oil feed line is perfect. And we've got enough room in here for our water line. It's gonna come up straight up like in there and come around and go up right there to our banjo fitting, which you can see right there. It's gonna come straight up. Um, and then that leaves plenty of room for this, this is the oil drain. It's a 45 off of the uh, oil drain port and then down and I've got it under this power steering line right there and so what that does is it makes sure that there's enough room for the radiator hose that I got the flex hose to come in like this and go over it you do not want your rubber hoses anywhere near this uh, steel braided lines because they will rub through all right so let's talk drilling the oil pan. Um, this is gonna be a little bit challenging if you have power steering and AC, especially AC. The AC lines are really in the way. And what you may have lying around the house is something like this, a regular 3 8 inch uh, drill. The uh, drill bit that you need may or may not come in 3 8 You may have to search for a 3 8 or you have to source a half inch drill. Um, but this is typically not going to work well for you. I even have this one, which is a little bit narrower profile, but it still doesn't fit very well. And I thought this might work. This is kind of a cute attachment for my angle grinder. Uh, this is just a drill chuck, 3 8 also, that goes on the angle grinder. It turns it into a right hand drill, which is kind of cool. I've used it before um, and it's super handy. But this one didn't fit either. So, I had to get this guy. This was from Harbor Freight. It's actually a pretty decent unit. It's pretty beefy. Um, and it really doesn't need to take too much torque. Um, this is the bit in question. We're gonna be drilling for an MPT half inch. And um, this is 45 64 or something like that. And uh, uh, bit, yep. 45 64 and so it really doesn't need a lot of torque um, which this thing definitely will not handle but for light drilling into the oil pan um, it's less than four millimeters thick this should do the trick all right so drilling the pan um, this is definitely one of those measure twice cut once type of deals so uh, in doing this you're going to want to come down about two inches from below the oil pan itself where that surface is and you want to come in just a little bit to avoid this uh, bolt that's right above where my finger is and um, you want to kind of measure make sure I've got my uh, 10AN fitting this is the MPT side and it's going to go right like this and you're going to want to verify that that looks good and that um, you'll be able to actually spin this. <laughs> you don't want to go too close so that, um, you know, it makes it so you can't actually put the 10 a in fitting on. That would be a huge bummer. What I've got here is the right angle drill, um, and I've got this little piece of PVC pipe. And so what that's going to do is it's going to slide on here like this. And if we look really closely, we've got the tip, but in terms of actual, uh, the flute, where the flute actually starts, is right here it's about a quarter of an inch um, the oil pan is only about four millimeters thick so a quarter of an inch is fine and uh, what this will do is prevent it from drilling through and we want to do that because the oil pickup line is right on the other side of the hole we're gonna drill so by doing this it definitely will prevent any kind of drill through and it's a little bit sturdier and something like rubber or uh, electrical tape or something like that that uh, people use from time to time. So we're going to grease this up and get started.
right. So now um, I regreased several times, as you saw. And what I'm going to do now is actually reach in there with some Q-tips and try to get it. And then we're also going to flush it with some mineral spirits. We're going to drain the oil. The oil has not been drained. Um, so we're going to drain the oil and then we're going to flush it out with some mineral spirits and hopefully get rid of any little bits and pieces that might be there. So yeah, check this out. I've already dug in there a few times and I still got some shavings. This is like, this is like the fifth one. So yeah, uh, the shavings will probably be caught by the, if anything remains in there, it'll be caught by the little filter that's at the base of the um, oil pickup. But it's always good to be safer than sorry. All right, so tapping the hole, um, we're gonna thread the hole. Now in my case, um, the bit, just to reiterate, the bit and the tap that I'm using is um, to do a tap for a half inch um, 14 MPT thread. Now a lot of other, you know, Miata things goes for the 3 8 inch, but I wanted the full uh, half inch so that I could use my 10 AN fittings. Um, with, no, with no restrictions. And so um, for this one, it actually happens to fit pretty well, even though this is a square end, as in as most taps are. This fits pretty well into a 17-inch, uh, I mean a 17-millimeter uh, deep well socket. So this just goes right in there. Let's close. And um, the key on this one is you do want to be very straight. You don't have to be absolutely straight I mean you don't want to drill an oval when you're uh, drilling but for tapping you do want it to be straight you definitely do not want it to be pointing kind of upwards um, you want it if it if it can't be straight then it needs to be sort of at a, a downward angle something like that All right, I did a few more uh, threads worth deeper into the tap, and uh, this is not screwed all the way in, it's just a test fit, but it's, it's starting to give resistance now. So basically what you want is a few threads showing. Um, so basically about two or three more turns past where it is right now, and we should be good to go. All right, so we just need to uh, finish measuring the drain line and finish up that hose end and we'll be all set with all the lines. Well, that will do it for this video. Thanks for watching and please click subscribe, give me a like, and dare I say it, click the bell icon to get notified of the next episode in the DIY Turbo Build. Thanks again and I'll catch you next time.